Uh, hello there, everybody. We don't have any classics to analyse here on The Verdict this week, but we do have six very interesting races, and potentially the six winners that we are going to look at throughout the programme could all turn up at Royal Ascot, should everything go well with them. There's some really interesting performances as well in behind the winners, so plenty for your racing TV trackers. And we're going to start at Weatherby in midweek with an interesting two-year-old, Breeze was the name, didn't go off favourite, 17 to two for the John Quinn yard. Jason Hart was on board. It was Commander Straker who was favourite. Shade of odds on at six to five on with Makito, second best at nine to two. But it was Breeze who won the day and did so in very good fashion. This is a nice performance from Breeze, daughter of Star Spangled Banner on her debut. She came out of stall number four in the green colours. Command Straker came from stall five and finished second and saw KO finished third from stall number three. Let's see how this race unfolded then. In essence, it was quite a steadily run affair with a fast finish. And Breeze put her rivals to the sword very quickly. She got rid of them very easily in the final three furlongs. Her finishing speed percentage was 105.78%. So she's come home 5.78% quicker in the last couple of furlongs than she did in the rest of the race. She posted a pretty good overall time. I mean, it's 7.57 seconds. See how she travels strongly, just sat in fourth place at this stage and then angled out off this steady pace and then she quickens up and she does so in very good style. Effectively, this became a two furlong sprint. The fourth furlong, she flew through in 11.31 and then the fifth furlong, she backed that up with an 11.6 thereafter. And that was way too quick for her rivals, notably Command Straker in second place, who'd had a previous start as well and was a good second at Newbury on her debut but she's been firmly put in her place here by Breeze, who has sprinted clear and is eased down by Jason Hart in the closing stages. What she could do if she got a better gallop, well, who knows? She's likely to find out at Royal Ascot for the Albany could be the place for her to go now. She's closely related to the Wow Signal, who was a, a really nice two-year-old and a winner at Royal Ascot for the John Quinn team and she seems to have a lot of the assets that the WOW Signal had, notably a good turn of foot, and she's a quick filly, very quick indeed. And to do this on debut is quite impressive. You can see there Jason Hart's body language. Well, he's motionless, really. He's hardly doing anything at the furlong pole, and then he just nudges her out, hands and heels. Look how she runs about a little bit. She's a little bit green, but nothing in behind can live with her, and she's done this in good fashion. She'll go under the radar a little bit, when we go to Royal Ascot, for there will be bigger yards with well-touted two-year-olds, but she might just be able to run a big race there, you would have thought, given that she can do this on her debut. Jason Hart, motionless at the furlong pole, then he says go, and those furlongs that she fired of 11.31 and 11.6 completely destroyed this field, and she's certainly worthy of her place in much better company going forward. She's definitely one to put in your racing TV tracker. Let's have a look at a three-year-old filly now from the John and Thady Gosden yard who completely routed her rivals at Kempton midweek. Uh, and the filly is Emotion, who went off the six to four favorite for this mile and a half event. And uh, she puts up a tremendous performance here. Let's have a look at what she achieved out there. She jumped out of stall seven, so she's widest of all over this mile and a half trip. Miridadi was from stall four and finished in second place, and Tunqua Lake was back in third from stall number three. Now, it's not often that you watch uh, any race, particularly on the all-weather, where a horse can win by 16 lengths, but that's exactly what she did here, taken forward in the early stages of this contest and just trying to edge across. In a race that was quite steadily run, she has got a stamina-laden pedigree. She's by Frankel, but she's out of a Lomi Tass mare, and the distaff side of her pedigree screams stamina, and she'll stay further than this mile and a half trip, should she have to. But she was way too good for her rivals here. She's eased to the front now, and she'll just dictate from now on what was an even gallop, according to the course track sectionals. She was the only horse 
in the race to dip under 12 seconds for individual furlongs. No other filly in the race could get under 12 seconds, but she did. The 9th furlong and the 10th furlong were her quickest. She went 11.94 through the 9th furlong, and then when it came to the 10th furlong, she was 11.8. That's when she really quickened up off the bend, turning for home, and put her rivals to the sword. This is not, I don't think, a very strong race. It can't be for her rivals were absolutely thrashed, but she must be useful. She can't be anything but if she can win by 16 lengths and do it in the style that she does it. A final three furlongs, 36.24. So she was coming home very evenly, just a shade bigger than 12 seconds for each individual furlong from three furlongs out. So she's just a filly who can gallop and she can go even 12s over this sort of trip. From now on in, it's all over. Her rivals are being pushed along, they can't make any inroads, and she just pulls further and further clear in the home straight, and she is really, really impressive. Now, she will be crabbed for this. People will say she's not beaten anything. Well, I'm not gonna ask what she's beaten, I'm simply going to ask how fast did she run, and she ran fast, and none of her rivals could live with her. See her change her legs at the intersection there, and then she flies away and hits the line very hard. She's entered in the Kazoo Oaks. Now, she's not had much experience, and that might be a step too far for her. She's about a 33 to one shot for the Oaks at the moment, but maybe Royal Ascot would be on the agenda for her. Possibly the Ribblesdale, something like that for this filly. Uh, she's clearly miles better than her opponents, and there's a lot more to come from her, I think. Lightly raced, big, strong filly with a super pedigree, loads of stamina. Uh, and I think once that stamina is eked out a little bit more, perhaps a more strongly run race, where perhaps she gets a lead and she can settle in behind the leader, then she might be a very good filly uh, going forward. She's pretty straight and true in the closing stages. She doesn't run around uh, too much under pressure. She knows her job and she's streaked clear of her, her rivals. It'll be interesting to see if they can go on to Frank the Form, Miradadi in second place and Tunqua Lake back in third. Maybe they'll find something on the all-weather going forward, but I think this winner, who gets a, a nice pat down the neck as she crosses the line, I think they think of quite a lot of her, and going forward, she could be a Royal Ascot horse. I would not be surprised to see her turn up there for the Gosden team. She has routed her rivals, and very rarely, very, very rarely do we see something this good at Kempton on the all-weather midweek. She's very good. Emotion the name. Going to bring you a couple of races from uh, Nottingham midweek and start off with a very interesting mile and a quarter event. And uh, I think there's one horse in this race in particular that you must put in your racing TV trackers. The winner was West Wind Blows, who went off a 17 to 2 shot for the Simon and Ed Christopher team. Jack Mitchell was on board, chimed, went off the odds on favourite head of Franz Strauss in uh, second place at 4 to 1. West Wind Blows then jumped out of stall number six and made every yard of the running here. Returned to Dubai, was in second place from stall one. And in third place was Franz Strauss, who jumped out of stall number four. Now, this was a very straightforward performance from the winner, West Wind Blows, who's quite a keen going sort, wears a hood, and went straight to the front here and looked to be going with quite a lot of zest through the early part of the race, was taken on for about a furlong or so and then established an advantage and it looked like perhaps West Wind Blows was doing too much out in front but if you look at the course track sections you'll see that Jack Mitchell got him nicely settled and he wasn't doing too much once he got clear. Jack Mitchell got him back, got him travelling within himself and he fired a finishing speed percentage of 102.72 so he came home just under 3% quicker in the final three furlongs than he ran the rest of the race. So he didn't do too much early on, although to the eye, it looked like he was a little bit keen. Jack Mitchell steadied them to such an extent that he was able to then wind the pace up from four furlongs out, firing furlong eight, the quickest furlong of the race at 11.58 seconds. So this was a race where he went hard to establish an advantage, quick, then he slowed it, and then he went again. It was a good ride from Jack Mitchell out in front. And this is a pretty good horse, I think. Nicely bred. The Dam won the Prix Diane. 
And although he's not on pedigree certain to stay uh, 12 furlongs, he's cer certainly going to get a little bit further than this. Now, the Racing TV tracker horse, I'll stop it there, keep an eye on this horse here. This is real dream on debut for Sir Michael Stout. So just keep that horse in focus as he come up the home straight. And look at the good work that he does late on. He finishes fourth real dream, but he fired the second fastest final three furlongs in the race. Only the winner was quicker than him through the final three furlongs. 36.65 real dream came home in, not far off the speed that the winner came home in. So Real Dream has done some very good late work once the penny dropped. Here he comes, starting to make headway now, and he'll fly into fourth, and he'll almost nab third as they get to the line. Meanwhile, the winner is staying on strongly, having dictated a steady gallop mid-race, and then quickened from four furlongs out. There's Real Dream, finishing off really well in the closing stages, and he is a must for your racing TV tracker. He's a sort of horse that Sir Michael Stout will do very well with in the future, and he'll be sure to be well placed too. You can see he's under pressure and very green in the yellow and blue colors, the Sahel colors towards the outside, but he does run on very well. The winner, I think, is quite a nice horse. He's entered in the Derby. He's entered the King Edward VII at Royal Ascot. That might be more like it for him. So yet another horse here on the verdict that might head to Royal Ascot on the back of wins uh, this week. Uh, he is a bit of a free-going sort, but Jack Mitchell has, uh, has got him really. I think he understands this horse and he rode him to perfection here. He's getting tired late on. The sectionals say he slowed down markedly in the final furlong and he was hanging a little bit to his left into the rail, but he put them to the sword from four furlongs out. That's where the pace picked up and nothing could live with him, but real dream might be one in the future that could beat him and perhaps win a very good race somewhere down the line. Let's go um, back to Nottingham now. I'm going to have a look at a Phillies event with a very impressive winner. Uh, the trip here was a mile. The favourite was Kirilenko at 5-2. to two. Sweet Fancy was in at 11-4. Ashkey 4-1. to one. And then the winner, C. Silk Road, a 6-1 to one shot, who wins here for William Haggis and Stevie Donoghue and puts up quite an impressive performance on the clock. And I think she's pretty useful going forward. She jumped out of stall number two. So she's down towards the inside. She beat Queen of the Skies from five. That's a very interesting horse, I think, and banned from stall one. I think this is a race that's going to work out very well indeed. There'll be lots of horses for your uh, racing TV track, and we'll pick them up in the closing stages. To start with, the winner in the yellow colours a little bit slowly away at uh, Sea Silk Road, but she got a nice pitch just tracking the pace, which was set by Kirilenko in those uh, Cheveley Park colours. Now, what did the winner actually achieve? Well, she's got a bright turn of foot. That's what the figures tell us. She has got a really good turn of foot. Her seventh furlong of 11.61, so the penultimate furlong in the race, sealed the deal here. And her final three furlongs was pretty quick, really. If you look at uh, the final three furlongs in all of the Nottingham card, this was right up there. 35.76 is what she came home in through the final three furlongs. And a finishing speed percentage of 104.88. So that's a, throwing a lot of figures at you, but what it's telling us is that she's finished off the race very quickly and she's quickened sharply in the penultimate furlong to seal the deal here and win in really good fashion. Now, it gets a bit messy at uh, this point. You can see Band in the purple sleeves, just towards the inside, will not get the clearest of runs. This is an interesting horse for handicaps, I think, going forward, Band and want to keep a close eye on. Huey Morrison trains this filly, and I think she will be very effective in handicaps going forward. Another horse to keep a close eye on, who's really tenderly handled here, is Queen of the Skies, who ultimately finishes in second place. And your winner is just tucked in here, just getting a toe, and he's gonna angle out in a minute and quicken up really, really well. Watch the, the run that Band gets down towards the inside. It's gonna be short of room in a moment or two and can't get out. Now the winner makes a move. Sea Silk Road, and this is where she quickens, and she does in good style. Band's getting into a bit of a barging match. And meanwhile, Queen of the Skies has been completely outpaced by the surge of the winner. Look where she is now. She was next to the winner. They were upsides each other about a furlong prior to this, but Queen of the Skies has quickened and left her for dead. But she does some very good late work, Queen of the Skies. 
runs on very strongly into second place. You wouldn't imagine that at this point, would you? Meanwhile, Sea Silk Road, she's away and gone. She's quickened up. It proved decisive, that penultimate furlong. Nothing could live with her. There's Queen of the Skies running on really strongly late on, banned back in third. Both of those need to go in your racing TV tracker. But this winner, I think he's pretty useful. I wonder where she's going to go. It's possible that she could end up at, at Royal Ascot, perhaps the Ribblesdale. She holds an entry in the Ribblesdale, so yet another horse who we're going to see in the verdict this week who might go to Royal Ascot. And I think that could be legitimate for her, the way she's quickened up. The clock backs up the visuals. Often we look at races and then we, we go to the clock for confirmation. I like to do it the other way around myself, look at the clock and then see what they've achieved and then have a look at it, then have a look at the visuals. And the visuals here certainly back up what she did out there on the track. Quickened up, the surface was a bit loose, there'd been a little bit of rain, but she quickened up in very good style and the figures say she's got a bright turn of foot, 11.61 seconds for that penultimate furlong. These well-bred fillies in behind her could not live with her, could not live with the speed that she showed to fire that particular section. She's going to be a very nice filly for the William Haggis team. Haydock staged a very interesting mixed card on Saturday, Swinton Hurdle being the, the feature event. But this was the, the best flat race on the card. It was over seven furlongs. Aldari was the long odds on favourite at two to five. Safe Voyage had won this race before, it was seven to one. Ross Collin was in there at nines and it was 11 to one and bigger the rest. And the odds on favourite did not disappoint coming out of stall number three in the Shadwell colours and beat Bounce the Blues from stall seven, widest draw of all, and Misty Grey from stall five, an all-weather horse really, Misty Grey. Uh, was in third place for the, the Tom Dascombe team. Now, the reason I wanted to have a look at this race is because this is a big effort from the winner to win because of how the race was run. He was completely inconvenienced by the run of the race. Ross Collin gets his own way out in front and according to the numbers, dictates a very steady gallop. Aldari is way off that steady gallop, held up by Jim Crowley with quite a lot to do seemingly. He's all the way back there. He's gonna to have to go past the whole field, but he's gonna to have to go past them when they're quickening, when they're going forward strongly because this race is steadily run. How steady? Well, quite slow really, 109.19%, the finishing speed percentage. So they've gone steady and then sprinted and Aldari's come home just over 9% quicker than he ran the rest of the race but he's having to close in on horses who are not stopping, but close in on horses who are keeping up their gallop. And how smartly did he actually quicken up? Well, his sixth furlong was 11.36 seconds, and his seventh furlong, he backed that up with an 11.34. So he's flown through those two furlongs to surge past his rivals, who've effectively all got first run on him. Ross Collin under the pump now, Safe Voyage, not quite the horse that he was at the moment, is he? He didn't find much under pressure. The runner-up, just about to get to the front, bounce the blues, past Ross Collin. But here comes Aldari, quickening up like a wild horse towards the outside. And although this is not a particularly strong race, he was inconvenienced by the run of it, but he overcame that and he won readily, just nudged out by Jim Crowley in the closing stages. And this marks him out to be very useful indeed. I'm not worried that he's not beaten a lot. I'm just impressed with the manner of what he did off what was a very steady gallop. He's clearly got a sharp turn of foot. He's clearly very useful. And well, Royal Ascot could beckon. Queen Anne perhaps for this fella, but maybe the Lockinge as well. He's got an entry in the Lockinge and I think he'll be even better when he faces better rivals and gets a better gallop to go at. The ground at Haydock was seemingly pretty well watered, uh, but it didn't seem to inconvenience uh, this fella. And indeed, he is best with a little bit of dig. All of his previous form tells us that he wants a little bit of cut in the ground. He's run three times on ground that had firm in the description and was beaten every time. But all his wins have come with a little bit of cut. So if he gets into a good uh, Group 1 race with a bit of dig in the ground and a good gallop, he's going to be a live player going forward. Look at the way he quickens here. He puts Bounce the Blues away, no problem at all. Ross Collin weakening up against the rail and then he's just pushed out and then he hands and heels by Jim Crowley. I think he's very good. He didn't produce a, a great overall time, but those two furlongs that he fired 
to go past his field were really, really impressive. He's a group one horse. Island on Saturday, Nace, five furlongs, two year olds in action here and an odds on favorite in the shape of Little Big Bear for Aidan O'Brien and Shamie Heffernan. He was the man on board. And uh, this horse bolts up, beating the second favorite, Alexis Zorba, and to keep up with my empire was back in third place. He came out of stall seven, this horse, and he's put up a tremendous performance in my book. I think he's very, very good, this two-year-old, and he will definitely be at Royal Ascot. Make no mistake about that, should all be well. Third horse comes from there, keep up with my empire. This is how he did it, under Shamey Heffernan. Um, he'd had one run, so he'd had the benefit of experience. He was beaten on his debut at uh, the Curra. Now, perhaps surprisingly, given what he does here, but he clearly learnt an awful lot from that, and he destroys this field. Look at him, he's a big son of no nay never, travelling well within himself, he's got a bit of cover, he's not too keen, he's doing everything the right way as he gets a nice lead off Alexis Zorba. Now, when he was beaten on his debut, Shartash finished third. This horse finished in second place, and Shartash went on to win on this card on Saturday, as well. So that form's looking very good from that Curra race. Now he's angled out towards the outside on the straight course at Nace. It's often best to be towards the stand side. Didn't make much difference here because he was just way better than his rivals. He quickens up to beat Alexis Zorba. Keep up with my empire, plugging on in third place. But I put it to you that he's not doing a tap out in front. Shami Heffernan never gets the bat out. He just pushes him out, hands and heels and then eases him down as soon as he hits the line. There he is, ears pricked. What a big, strong individual he looks. He'll surely stay six furlongs. This was five, but it's quite a stiff finish at Nace. I don't think six furlongs would be a problem, and therefore the Coventry is a likely target for him. He was installed after this race at around about the six to one mark uh, for the Coventry. The, the market's matured in, the, in the, the days since, and he's about 10 to one generally now. That's generally available about him for the Coventry and that seems pretty fair to me because I think this race will work out well the runner-up I'm sure that Alexis Zorba will go and win a race in the near future for the Joseph O'Brien team uh, and this fella is going to gain valuable experience here two runs under his belt now and Royal Ascot is surely the next stop for him and get this for a stat in the last 14 days Aidan O'Brien has had 39 runners and 16 winners that was up to this point. That is a 41% strike rate for the Aidan O'Brien team. And that is some going. He has got his team in great form uh, currently. And this fella, well, I'm sure he'll be Coventry bound. You can see there the uphill finish and hit the rising ground. He gets, he's very strong late on. His finishing time was okay. One minute, it's 2.46 uh, seconds but there was an awful lot more in the tank, you have to say. He's down by Shamie Heffernan. The horse just wanted to go. He wanted to run on and do, do a little bit more. He's saying to himself, is that all I've got to do to win a race here? That was a very nice performance. A little big bear, Royal Ascot band. And we have a new Derby favorite. Luxembourg is now out of the Derby. So I just wanted to mention Stone Age, who won on Sunday. He was very impressive, making every yard of the running under Ryan Moore at Leopardstown. He's been installed as the three to one favorite and he looks pretty legitimate, I thought, for that. His winning time was, was really good compared to the other times on the card. And uh, he's about three to one. And I think that's fair enough as far as the derby is concerned for a Stone Age. So I hope you've enjoyed everything that we brought you on the, the verdict this week. Lots of clues, perhaps, for uh, Royal Ascot. Aldari, I think, was the star on show, given what he did against circumstances that would not necessarily suit him. Lots to think about from the verdict this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time around.